my involvement was the analysis of the remains, uh, study of casts of the specimen, x-rays, CT scans, things like that. Katanumu is about at the 80 percentile level. So there are a few individuals larger than he was, uh, but he's pretty good sized. And he's, we estimate his stature to be about between five feet and five and a half feet. But you can't be certain because we're using modern human standards and those obviously do not apply to Australopithecines. Uh, but nevertheless, he's about twice the size of Lucy. So he represents probably near the top end of size for the species. And she certainly represents the low end for the species. So the, given the time difference between the two of them, which is 400,000 years, it's no surprise that you find a small one and then you find a large one. It's just kind of happenstance that the two partial skeletons both come from the extremes of the range. I always make the joke that if you have one specimen and you put the point on the graph, it's difficult to draw a line through it. But if you have two points, you can make a line. And one of the things that this specimen does for us is it gives us a second sample of afferensis for which we can compare all sorts of things such as body proportions and the like. And one of the interesting things is, is that there are changes that happen to the skeleton as one gets small or large and approaches the end of the range of the species. And one of the long-standing arguments, no pun intended, was that Lucy's uh, lower limbs were unusually small or short because she was unusually small. And it turns out that's true. Uh, Katanumu essentially has um, relatively longer limbs to his body size than she did. So there is a, a what is called an allometric relationship there. So that tells us that much of our lower limb elongation is primitive and not derived, didn't come recently in human evolution. Every year there's a field season. There's a strong possibility that something will be found of great significance. Sometimes it's more recent than this material, but that helps us fill in the gaps in other parts of human evolution as well. So 10 years from now, we'll know a lot more than we know right now.